uh, good, good night tonight. Um, really excited. I think uh, we were really able to help the Packers, help this football team. Um, just, you know, add really good football players and really good people to this, uh, to this roster. And um, I think everybody's excited about that. And uh, that'll take questions. Brian, did you largely stick to the whole best player available philosophy uh, along the way? Because it, it looks like the guys you took clearly filled needs. Mm -hmm. Did you have to go and maybe stray a little bit at various times to kind of fill that need along the way? No, I think there was some temptation to do that along the way, but I think we really were able to stay with the, the, the BPA best player available. I really, um, the board held up exceptionally well, which is really a credit to our personnel staff, um, it, it, but it held up very, very well. Uh, as we went, we had um, you know we had more choices um, uh, during the picks that we had, which was nice. And we, one of them obviously allowed us to move down and do some things, which was nice too. So I pick up some picks. So no, I think um, we were able to kind of stay with the best player available. There were some guys we had rated you know uh, equally, and then need maybe played a little bit of part in that as well. Um, but we never had to dip down around or anything like that. Brian, did you move back because someone you wanted had been picked, or did you just think you had so many guys that? Yeah, no, no. We actually had that deal done a couple of picks ahead of time, you know. So um, no, I mean it was just he. In that particular round, we were very, we were, our board was very, very strong. Uh, I was not able to pick up picks in the first day, and I kind of wanted to. So this was an you know an opportunity to do that, um, you know. And then it gave us some ammunition to kind of, you know, there's a couple times I think later today that we tried to move around a little bit, we couldn't. But um, you know, we might have the ability tomorrow with the extra picks that we gained. The last game well, you, you played against the 49ers defense that's anchored by two really good linebackers. Mm -hmm. I don't want, I'm not asking you to compare Quay and. But in terms of what what you can get from those two guys as an anchor on your second level, is there do you envision similar impact there? Yeah, I think it's tough to compare that. I think obviously we're moving to a little bit of a new defense where we're going to have some more numbers at linebacker. And if you look, you know, beyond just this year um, of the linebackers that we have under contract, we needed to kind of address that a little bit. Really excited to get both guys today, um, and we think that they'll help. I mean, not only will they help on defense, but I think special teams as well. Um, as we move into this kind of new defense where maybe we have a few more linebacker body types, um, you know, these are exactly the kind of guys that we're looking for, the guys that can run and hit. What's the impact value of having two of those guys at that position that has kind of come and gone in terms of significance in the league and seem to be making a comeback? Yeah, I don't think it's, you know, it's always been important. I think, um, you know, for most, most snaps, so we're going to play with two of those guys. Um, so certainly we needed to add some depth, um, and then obviously those guys are critical on your special teams, and um, both these guys are going to have, uh, a, you know, a very good ability in that in that phase. I think both of them. Cooper and uh, Bullard add to your defense. You think that they both are ready to play right away? There's mm -hmm. lots, you know, there for the taking. Yeah, they have obviously a lot of speed, right? You know, they bring a lot of speed. Um, these guys are really good football players. They run and hit. Um, I think you know with uh, Bullard, he's he's very versatile. He can play the nickel. He can play safety. Uh, he's done a lot of things. Um, you know, he's a, a big time leader for that football team at Georgia, which has been very, very good. Um, and then obviously, you know, Cooper, he just, the, the speed that he brings to the table at the linebacker position is rare. And um, so I think we got, we got a lot faster, which I wanted to do while we this this weekend. But are these the defensive players, are these guys you would have picked regardless of scheme or were they more like, okay, these guys really do what, you know, Jeff? Yeah, I think regardless of scheme, you know, yeah. I think the linebacker position was one, regardless of scheme, we were going to have to address. Um, but we do need a little bit more bodies there than, than we would have, you know, maybe in the past. What was that impressed you about Lloyd? I just think, you know, one, he had a very good start in the SEC. He was really good back in the SEC. And I think it's just his overall ability, not only as a runner, but the ability to catch the ball. I think he's got some return ability. Um, you know, he's a 220-pound man. He's packed in a, a tighter frame, but, like, he's a – um, his ability to kind of make people miss, he's got a little juice to him. Um, and then, again, he's 220 pounds, and he, he breaks tackles. So uh, we think his best football is ahead of him, and we're really excited to get him as well. When you look at how he's about 5'7", and three, what are your feelings about 5'7", and three quarters here? I'm guessing Ron Wolf might not have taken the guy. I mean, I realize it's a running back, but... You're talking about Boyd? Yeah. 5'8", and three quarters. Oh, is it 5'8", and yeah. three quarters? Oh, they showed 5'8". I eight guess, yeah, yeah. That's been a surprise. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Five eight and three quarters. Um, but yeah, he's a little shorter. But I mean, at the same time, again, he's two hundred twenty pounds. When you
you guys get a chance to see him if you haven't already, and he's pretty put together. With uh, with your linebackers, the four three is kind of new to us too. Can you have Walker and Cooper on the field at the same time? Like, is can you nickel? Like, can you go to your four two five? Can they you, like are they, can they are they middle linebackers? Can you play with the Will and Sam together? Yeah, I think those guys are those guys are interchangeable. Certainly, there's going to be some different responsibilities, but what they're going to be asked to do, I think all our linebackers are going to be interchangeable. I know that. They'll call them Mike, Will, and Sam, um, and they'll have different responsibilities, but their skill sets will be the same. If right. that makes any sense. Kind of had this with AJ, where you know, and Marshawn, where they didn't catch many passes. How, how can you tell if a running back's a good pass catcher if he doesn't squeeze that much in college? Yeah, I think one, you know, I think um, you know, you look at the opportunities they have. Um, when you're up, when you got boots on the ground, certainly in practices and things like that, you get a pretty good idea whether it's the All Star games, things like that. And then the combine's always a, a very good indicator. Uh, again, it's different than game time situations, but um, um, you know, I think you go through. I know with AJ, again, he he rarely you know was used in the passing game at all at Boston College, um, but when he went through the stuff at the combine, I mean, his, his hands were rare. He had excellent hands. Um, so again, now whether that can translate into run routes, that's the harder part. You know, if they don't do a lot of that, um, then you're kind of just betting on the athletic skill set and do they have the ability to do that stuff once they're in our system and you're you know coached by our guys. When you talk about the three linebackers being interchangeable among mm -hmm. the three, I don't know if other systems might have it more standard by Sam Will mm -hmm. or not, but why, why do you want it to be interchangeable there? Well, well first of all, like we talked a lot, of, we'll, this is a 4 2 5 league, right? And so um, I just think, I think if those guys are interchangeable, they can do everything we're asking those guys to do. Um, it just gives you flexibility. Um, you know, I think when um, if a player is limited in some form or fashion, then that can be a problem. Really, speed is, is the game right now. They've got to be able to run, you know. And I think the two guys we selected today, obviously you guys know Quay can run. Um, we've gotten faster. Isaiah can run. Um, so I really like that group and what we're happy with that right now. With Ryan, speaking of you know, interchangeable, mm -hmm. uh, can Bullard, you know, he played the slot with star whatever two years in a row and then was a free safety last year. Is he the interchangeable safety that you you really want alongside McKinney? Yeah. I mean, he can, you know, he can play the post. He can come down. He can jump in the nickel. Um, he, he can do a lot of things, you know, and he has done a lot of things. And, and uh, you know, probably a, as close to a pro style defense as it, you know as there is. So yeah, you know, he's um, he's a very versatile player. I think in our current situation, we'll probably start him at safety. But like a lot of these guys, until our guys get them and get their hands on them and work with them, those things will ultimately be determined um, at a later date. But um, you know, he's um, he's versatile enough to do all the things. How much further did you put into um, Marshall Lloyd's fumbles? Um, did you go back and look at it? We did. Yeah, you know, you always look at those things. Um, we felt they were correctable. We didn't, it wasn't an over big concern for us, you know. So, um, but yeah, that we, those are always things that, that jump out at you that maybe make spend extra time on. So, Brian, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see all the talent that Georgia has on defense. You guys have four of them now. Mm -hmm. What is it about them that makes you kind of feel like, wow, these guys are guys that we want? Yeah, they're recruiting better than. But um, no, I mean obviously it's a very successful program, uh, like many others. But they, um, you know, the way they go about their business is uh, I think produces you know guys who are ready to play in the National Football League, and they are getting some of the top talent as most of the, some of those SEC schools are. So um, I don't think it's it's not something intentionally that we just target Georgia or anything like that. I think it's just kind of how it's played out. Um, they've been one of the better teams in, in, in uh, college football over the past few years. So uh, we're glad to have them. You know. I mean, it's, a nice phone call to say, ask them if they want to keep that G on their helmet. You know, that's always a nice thing when you're when you're drafting these guys. But, um, but you know, to, there's programs in this in this country in college football that if you survive and make it uh, there for three or four years, that you kind of know what you're going to get um, because of what you have to do day in and day out to survive in those those programs. So, um, that's one of them. Brian, what do you what do you like best about Hopper? And he, he mentioned on the phone that he had a formal with you guys in Indy mm -hmm. and also a three-day visit here. Just yeah, no, you know, he's, he's really physical. He can run, um, you know, but his stopping power when he, I mean, when he takes on ball carriers is pretty impressive. Very serious-minded guy. I think he really helped change that defense. The Missouri defense was, was excellent. Um, had a number of good players, but um, they're very well coached there. Another one of those programs where, you know, we felt really good about taking somebody out of that program because of, of how they do things there. So, um, you know, but 
his stopping power as a, as a tackler was really impressive. Speaking of interchangeable, at safety, you said you wanted to stay interchangeable. Mm -hmm. How do you see Javon's combination, how he's going to match with, with Xavier? Yeah, again, I think, like I said before, I don't think there's anything he can't do, you know. Um, you know, X is such a dynamic player, and obviously we put a lot into him to get him here. Um, we want to be able to try to move him around and, and put him in different spots. And to do that, you have to have somebody else, you know, next to him that can do a lot of those things. So if Javon's able to come in here and kind of win that job, if that's what ends up happening, we do feel really good about him being able to do that again. Um, NFL defense are a little more complex at times, and so it'll take him some time, like all these guys, uh, to adjust. But once he gets there, the skill set is there to do all those different things, which allows, you know, X to be freed up as well. Back to the last team's question on Marshawn. Um, is the hand size an issue there? I don't think so. You know, we've, we've run, you know, the analytic studies as far as fumbles and hand size doesn't really track, so I don't think so. Okay, yeah, and the positive note with him, I mean, he would hit a lot of big playability. Is that something that you're looking for? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, obviously, especially, you know, not only as a runner, but in the passing game as well. He's got, you know, he's got serious speed. Um, he's very, um, Elusive. Uh, he's, he's got great balance. So yeah, he's 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 a little bit different than some of the backs we have in in, um, in uh, our depth chart right now. After right. watching the Hopper um, play during the year, were you surprised at what he ran in the forty? And then you know, but he still has a pretty good vertical, right? And yeah, no, he, I think he was in the high four fives for us. He ran fast, um, so that was pretty good for us. And um, he's an explosive athlete, you know. So um, no, I. I he runs fast on tape, ran fast for us on the watch, so it all, it all came together. You have him in high four fives, you said? Mm -hmm. Yes. Watch. Yep. Yep. Ryan, are you looking at uh, defensive players with the same kind of skill set that you have in the past, or body types, or anything different with Jeff here now? Or has he had any input in that regard? He certainly had a lot of input in how we felt about um, free agency in the draft, but um, I don't, not, not, there's not much changing as far as the, the style of play we're looking for or the um, body types or anything like that. I think there's some subtle differences in the scheme that we're looking for where maybe um, a guy's skill set maybe translates a little bit better here or there. But um, it, again, I've, I've stood up here before. I'm a big believer that we're trying to acquire guys that can fill whatever scheme we want to run. You know, and I think that's, that's doable in the National Football League. Um, but we're, there, there's, some, there's some subtle things that we're aware of that certainly um, might, you know, uh, edge a guy out over another guy. Can Cooper uh, change your pass rush at all, or was that something, were those eight sacks something to do with the college game? Yeah, I think, you know, both, um, uh, both linebackers have the ability, because of their speed and elusiveness, to, to beat kind of off-the-ball blitzers and, and dogmen that can kind of affect the quarterback. So, um, you know, I think it really probably came down to what, Missouri did compared to Texas and m They both have that ability. Um, and, you know, as far as how that's going to play out and, and what we're doing on defense now, we'll see. But it, it was an attractive thing to us, the fact that he's able to do that. You know, if you put him on, a, on an edge, he can, he can get around the corner. If a back's trying to come up, he can beat him. Um, that, was a, you know, that was part of our evaluation of him, for sure. How much opportunity does that give you for deception and disguising looks when you've got multiple off-ball linebackers that you can use in that yeah. way? Yeah, you know, I think... You know, both these guys are big rangy guys too as well, not taking away passing lanes. I think that's important. Um, obviously with Dre kind of moving on and, and stuff, like he, you know, with him and Quay, you know, that was, those were two big long um, linebackers that um, you know, really could take away passing lanes. So I wanted to make sure that you know, we didn't get too short there either. I mean, both of these guys have nice size and length. I think it's always been really important, um, but yeah, we, we pay a lot of attention to that stuff. Um, so our scouts do a great job, kind of as, a, as you go through, really finding because it's one thing to be a captain, but it's also you know you want to know you know who you know is that really our arm? Is that something that it, did the guys really follow these guys? And I I feel really good about the four guys, and, and obviously uh, Jordan uh, yesterday taking these guys of what they were at their programs. You know, um, most of these guys, with the exception of you know two, you know went to there, stayed there, and became leaders of their programs, right? And I think that's really important. Um, you know, we have a great locker room right now. We have an excellent culture in there. Um, but that can be a fragile thing if you don't put the right guys in there. And I think all five of these guys that we were able to acquire over the last two days really 
fit what we're trying to do in there. And um, you know, I'm excited for these guys to join when, when we get the opportunity. Um, it's important, I think, as we go about this and, and, the, and the guys we're selecting to put in the locker room that we're thinking about the guys that are already there. And um, so I do, I do think these guys are going to fit in well with uh, with what we got, and um, and that's a that's something we'd like to continue to do. Two more, please. Is there enough depth in this draft to justify all the picks you have at the end there? I mean, yeah, it, absolutely. There's always there's always players out there. It's our job to find them, right? You know, so um, you know, every to your point, every every draft's a little bit different as far as the depth goes and the numbers. Um, our numbers have held up pretty strong. Um, I do think you know. Um, with eight picks tomorrow, um, we have a little bit of ability to move around, maybe try to pick up something for next year. There's, there's, some, there's some options there. Um, but if we just sit and pick all eight of them, I'm, I'm golden with that or more. I mean, just because I think, you know, I've, I've talked a lot about the competition, you know, and I'm certainly the guys that you're going to pick, usually most of the time are going to have a little bit of better odds than the guys that, that are undrafted free agents. And, and so to me, like, just creating the competition so that, you know, it really accelerates everybody's growth. I mean, I think you know that's something that we've seen a lot. And um, if you don't do that, I think it can hinder you. So um, that's kind of the idea. You and Dan were talking about, <coughs> about the allure of having five picks in the first ninety one is spots made reference to maybe getting five of your top fifty guys. Yep. Um, why was it so important to have that? And did it go kind of according to plan that you weren't really tempted many times to go up? Yep. Yeah, I mean, I think you know, the couple times that we were tempted, uh, we were you know really tempted. And I you know I was trying. I think the guys were pushing back against me a little bit, saying, "Hey, we be patient here. I think it's going to be all right." And that's the way it worked out. So, um, yeah, I think you know obviously I think you know when you had five picks in the top ninety-one, um, capitalizing on those was really important. And um, you know again, I, you don't want to fall in love with the players, but as the board falls, you kind of you're trying to get a sense of. of what you're going to have, and when you pick, what you might not have, and uh, does it make sense to move up a little bit? And we had a lot of picks, so I was certainly willing to use those picks to move up um, to acquire certain players. Uh, and then we came close a couple of times to doing that, and then um, fortunately for us, it, uh, it kind of fell the right way for us. So in, in hindsight, I would have never needed to do that. You got five out of your 50? Yeah, I think I don't, you know, I think in, um, in our top, I mean, all these guys came out of our top two rounds, and I want to say roughly, I'd have to go back and look, but I think our, our numbers in our top two rounds was you know, just under that. Does it usually work out that way where your guys are pushing you to stay patient? We're not in the room, no. obviously, but what's no, that usually, usually like? like that. But uh, no, they were, they were uh, our guys were really tuned in and had a great feel for how this thing was going to fall, and I'm very appreciative for that. So why is that? You've done this long enough. Mm -hmm. Why, why do you, did you get a little antsy at times? That maybe, um, that maybe you wouldn't? No, I just I think there were some players up there that you know I, I was really hoping to acquire that we did end up acquiring that uh, um, you know again we had a lot of picks and so to me I didn't want to sacrifice any in the top three rounds um, but if we needed to do something else to acquire some of those players I was willing to do it um, fortunately we didn't have to thank you guys. Yep.